we respect them and that we appreciate that they have served our country in any form or fashion. We recognize each other spiritually. There's no difference in male or female or transgender or color here at the VA. We share the same foxhole, we share the same barracks, we, say this, we share the same latrine. Veterans seek the VA because we feel comfortable among our own. Intimate partner violence. At the VA here, we aim to help the veterans who struggle with domestic violence and partner-related uh, issues. I'm pretty sure the mental health, uh, the psychology department has groups for LGBT members. At the VA, I know we are starting care for uh, transgender patients. It is part of my goal to always tell them, it's not in your mind, it's real, and it's you're not alone. Well, I can never say this enough. Thank you for your service. You're not alone. You put your life on the line for your country. Whatever your sexual preference or gender identity, you shouldn't have to risk it at home. So they should always remember that they're not alone in this, and they've gone extra mile, and they've risked their life for us and for their country, and they should remember that we are here for them. And um, if they're struggling with it, we are here at the VA trying to help them and always there for them. In my patients who are of the LGBT population, I do feel that that is a common, like a denominator that I do see, that there is some IPV more maybe common than say in, in my in, you know, straight female population. I can connect with each one of my patients. Um, I just, I've been in the VA for a long time and I love it. From what I understand now, we have a lot of services available for our LGBT veterans who are in those circumstances. Our social workers are really engaged. Um, I work really closely with them to kind of help facilitate um, ways for them to get the services they need, um, you know, close follow-up. It can be really complicated for people that are coming from like an IPV situation. Um, our integrative uh, health clinic, which is pretty amazing. I always give somebody a handout to that and just kind of connect them with, the, with those services as well. The peer groups that we have is a way for um, our LGBT veterans to connect with one another, um, you know, work through, you know, feelings, experiences, um, and just know that they're not alone. If fears or concerns are expressed to validate them, not to dismiss them or, or, or discount them or minimize them, I think to, to give weight to the experiences that these, you know, that people are having, I think kind of helps, you know, patients realize like, it's not a weakness. It's actually, it's stronger for you to ask for help. We care, I care. You are not alone. You put your life on the line for your country, whatever your sexual preference or gender identity. So IPV is domestic violence. Um, that can mean many things. That can be emotional violence. That can be physical, sexual. Um, it doesn't discriminate based on age, gender, race. So IPV is intimate partner violence. Um, it's kind of the new term that we're using um, in lieu of domestic violence. Um, and I think, you know, it's important to use this term. I think domestic violence kind of connotates um, like spousal abuse. Um, and, you know, we want to make it clear that um, intimate partner violence can happen to anybody. Definitely, we first and foremost want to create a safe space for our veterans um, to make sure that they know that um, no matter who they are, where they come from, their sexual preference, um, that we do not discriminate here and we want to make sure that they feel comfortable with the care we provide and know that we do have a lot of resources available to them. So the VA not only has a multitude of services for the LGBTQ community, um, more specifically for transgender patients, we even have a separate endocrine clinic. You know, we're, we're really trying to be current and um, you know, give the best well-rounded care possible to all of our vets. Aside from the obvious, I mean, these are people that took care of us, you know, for in, in many different circumstances, and it's our turn to give back to them. I think um, the vets are a unique population. You're going to find here a group of people that really want to be here and really want to serve those who have served our country. So if you're a veteran who is in any sort of not ideal situation or you are needing services of any kind, 
give us a chance, come see us. We have so many things to offer you and we have people that really care here. We care, I care, you are not alone. You put your life on the line for your country, whatever your sexual preference or gender identity. You shouldn't have to risk it at home. The VA can help. Wide variety, especially here at HPAC for our homeless mental health patients. We have psychiatrists, psychologists, social workers, doctors, nurses, which range from LVNs to RNs. We have social service technicians. We have everyone that you can dream of to help you. If you feel more comfortable speaking with a psychiatrist versus a psychologist, we always have someone available. If you just find a social worker that you click with and want to share with them, you can share with them. If you find me, for example, I'm a clerk out front. If you feel that you can share with me, you can, and I will take it to the right person and relay it. I do it all the time. That's how we're able to engage so many more people. I have a few people that come to mind, which makes me smile because I remember when I first started how they were just angry. No one wanted to deal with them. And I'll be like, hey, come on up. And yes, we do say, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. How may I help you? But once you become more personal, they drop that. Don't call me, sir. My name is X, Y, and Z. Call me that. X, Y, and Z. Come on up. How are you doing today? Well, I'm not doing too good. What's going on? Come on, let's go outside and let's talk about it. And my coworkers, are, they know that I have that relationship in there. Okay, go ahead, because he's not himself today. Go ahead and speak to that person. But she's not herself today. Go ahead and speak to her. They're not themselves. Go speak to them. And I'm able to go and find out what's going on. Can you go tell so-and-so? Because I know they're going to help me, but I know how to tell you, and you know how to find the right words to get it across to them to where they are not misunderstanding what I'm saying. No problem. Well, we don't really have a lot of that here in this clinic, but the ones that we have come across, they are very open. Well, I want to be addressed as this. Yes, ma'am. I want to be addressed as this. Yes, sir. It's not a problem. It's not a laughing matter because they are who they are, and they serve this country, so we have to give them that same respect. I'm passionate about helping the people who want to be helped, and those, like, like seeing people outside, it's just heartbreaking because I know where I am and I know where I can be and I know I wouldn't want to be in that situation so I know that person doesn't want to be in that situation it's just something that's holding them back from telling someone hey help me and if we can find out what it is that's holding them back we can get engage so much so many more people this VA hospital is here for you especially for you because you served us so now it's time for us to serve you we all have pain, some more than others. Some people just step in other people's shoes and are able to accept them better, but you can make it through and there's plenty of us here willing to help you. I love what I do. Just, just, just come in and find your person. I say your person meaning someone you click with no matter what they are. They could be a housekeeper because we all know who we should refer someone to or where we should refer them to. So just come in and you could be sitting on a bench outside and you'll be conversing with another veteran and they'll say, hey, I know someone, they're great, and they'll refer you. And on your way to that person, you may find your person. Our peer support specialists are excellent because the job title is peer, so that means that they're a veteran as well. And if they feel that no one else can relate, that peer support person can because they've been through exactly what that person's been through. If we didn't care, we wouldn't work here at all. It's it's so much, it's so many more opportunities out there, but we choose to continue to come here, to continue to serve the people who served us. The VA can help. We care. I care. You are not alone. You put your life on the line for our country. Whatever your sexual preference, our gender identity, you shouldn't have to risk it at home. One of the reasons why we use the term intimate partner violence instead of domestic violence is I feel like intimate partner violence really is much more inclusive of what our patients actually experience. You know, during, during my time as a doctor, I've cared for patients who have experienced partner violence with their female partner, their male partner, their, um, their husband, their wife. It, it doesn't really exclude um, or define specific um, living relationships or um, you know, certain genders as, say, perpetrator or victim. If you're kind of using those terms, I think intimate partner violence really encapsulates that everybody can experience trauma.
and acknowledges that. I think every experience, um, every, every person's story is very specific to them and very unique. I think, um, you know, as a primary care physician, I'm often on the front lines um, and seeing people in all different circumstances. Um, you know, I, I, part of me doing my job well is asking people about their social support and their living environment so that I can really individualize my recommendations for them. As we get to know our patients, um, y you know, I, I've been really, um, different patients, uh, you know, have disclosed that they've, they've suffered trauma and the different relationships that they've had. You know, I think about one patient that I started caring for who's really, um, she has come quite far along her journey. Um, but she was incredibly open to me about how, um, you know, when she was actually in the military, um, her wife was, um, you know, really quite physically abusive to her and my patient now is a, a, a transgender female um, at the time she was living um, as a male when she was married and, and that was actually a very difficult um, experience kind of her journey through that entire process and healing as she's come out of it. You know we are screening for intimate partner violence we have amazing social workers that are knowledgeable about our VA resources as well as our community resources so we can offer a lot of support for people, regardless of where they're at and what kind of resources they're ready to, to kind of access within the VA system and also within the community. In my experience, often when people have gone through trauma, um, there's a lot of healing that needs to happen and it can be helpful to have a well-trained psychologist who knows about trauma. Um, as well as other mental health prescribers, be they mental health nurse practitioners or psychiatrists, to also help in that journey of healing. I would just want to say, please come and let the VA know how we can help you. Um, saying what you need can really help us meet your needs. You know, if you are a veteran and able to access VA healthcare services, we have women-specific clinics, we have homeless-specific primary care clinics, we have other primary care clinics that are all over the place. All you have to do is come in, prove that you're a veteran, and you can get an appointment, um, you know, very, very soon to get your needs taken care of. We have outreach workers that go out on the street. We have peer support specialists. So these are veterans that have done special training to really help support their veterans through the process of whatever they need. Within our own institution, we are building up um, kind of a transgender clinic, um, looking at ways within the chart to really use appropriate pronouns and kind of, um, you know, do a lot of staff training around, um, you know, talking with people in the way that makes them feel comfortable all around. We care. I care. You are not alone. You put your life on the line for your country, whatever your sexual preference or gender identity. You should not have to risk it at home. The VA can help. IPV is interpersonal violence, um, a new term kind of that's been did for domestic violence. Um, I've worked with several female veterans who have experienced IPV, um, come to the VA looking for that assistance, and we provide them with the resources they need. And I think it's more inclusive. Um, I think when you hear domestic, intimate partner violence, um, I think it's more inclusive. I think when you hear that term, it's not so people just think of a woman uh, receiving that violence. I think it affects men and women all the same. And I think we need to kind of let the terminology reflect that. Know that this is a safe place for them to come and receive services. I love working with the veterans, um, helping them, seeing them come home, um, overcoming barriers, and seeing them go on to be great and kind of have a great life and be with family and just to be able to give, give them back when they gave us so much. At the VA, we kind of recognize that, you know, times have changed and that it is 2018 and we're dealing with a different population that has different values, different beliefs, and that it is multifaceted and we embrace all that here at the VA. We care. I care. You are not alone. You put your life on the line for your country. Whatever your sexual preference or gender identity, you shouldn't have to risk it at home. The VA can help. I think a lot of times, a lot of stigma associated with military, the experiences they had that people don't care. Um, especially our female veterans. Um, so when they come to this space, I want them to 
feel open, I want to feel safe. I want them to have no filter when they talk to me and kind of let me know what's going on and how I can help. And to be so strong and to view themselves as so weak, it's like, no, you, you did more than anyone else in this world. And most people would never do in their lives. You, you gave so much, your family, your life, your friends, and you come back and say, you don't expect to be helped by the same people you put your life on the line for. If you're a veteran, if you need any kind of help, call your local VA. We're here to help. We care. As an LGBTQ person, that it's very important uh, as a veteran, uh, regardless of your sexual orientation or your identity, whatever you identify as, that you come in to the VA and get help. When you find somebody who you actually really feel comfortable with, is, it's really important that you continue going to appointments and coming in and seeking that help because they really do care and they really do help. They really are there for you. Um, immediately, she was just just really warm and welcoming. And that's the, the, and I could tell immediately that she cared just, just by her demeanor and the way that she talked to me that she saw me as a human. It wasn't like I was broken. It wasn't, you know, and it's, I think that a lot of people just treat you as just any patient. And instead she wanted to actually get to know me and she was looking at me. And when I said, I ended up saying, because something came up, uh, like a question came up or something and I ended up saying well so just so you know I'm a lesbian and she just immediately without even hesitation she goes okay cool <laughs> and, and I was like oh I thought that was gonna be a thing like I thought that'd be an issue so the fact that she was just so immediately that there was no there was nothing negative about that there was no negative reaction it was just immediately just going like and like <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, that's refreshing, because that doesn't often happen, at least in my experience. You know, and I served during Don't Ask, Don't Tell, so that was a different time, and I served during a time where you couldn't say who you were. So it's it's hard for me, honestly, even now, to to tell people, providers, you know, or anybody having to do with the veteran community, anything military. It's hard for me to still come out and say something, and I ended up. Um, telling her, you know, some some issues that I was having with that and she was able to help me and and make me feel like I was just like any other just that I was as, I was as, as important as any other veteran. And it was just she just wasn't treating me any differently. Um, I was holding in and that I you know needed to talk to somebody until it really hit me when I started talking to other vets and were just sharing stories and I realized that one of them started crying. And I was like I'm so sorry. The story that I was telling I thought was funny and I realized it wasn't. It was just how I remembered it. And it brought up so much stuff and I just realized I'm not doing okay and I haven't been doing okay. You know, and I and I realized too just my relationships through all of this stuff. I was struggling with a lot of things. And so I just anyway, I just realized that if I don't get help then I'm gonna take my life. When I came in, that staff at the VA, when I said, I'm not, I'm not doing okay, they just swooped in. And it, it felt like, it felt like people that, almost like, uh, as weird as this sounds, it felt like I just, I just had the right people that just made me feel like they were almost like family. They recognized me and they said, we care, we care so much, and they called me. I had people, like I had one of the people at the front desk call me and just check on me. Just checking on you, Miss Robinson, just wanted to make sure you're okay. I mean, when does that happen? But you just need to keep going and you need to be an advocate for yourself and really seek the help that you need. You know, in my exam room where, where patients can feel relaxed and cared for and heard and validated and I just, you know, that's kind of my thing and um, I really was glad to hear your story. and. I do remember when you said, you're like, and I'm, I'm a lesbian, I'm like, and, and how can I help you today? Like, it's yeah. not even an issue, right? It was so. like no issue. I was waiting, yeah. I was I waiting mean, for some kind of like, you know, like no, reaction yeah. or anything, but I was like, oh. <laughs> like, I was supposed to have a point to that. Right. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it was like, and then, you know, or I've seen you like several times, like, I don't can't, like maybe at least five, six times, like since yeah. that first time, and I don't know, it's just easy. Yeah. You're the best. <laughs> No, oh, you're the best. Thanks. So I'm trying to get it yeah. across here. I think one of the important things is understanding that if ever you do receive a roadblock, you know, at the VA to keep going. Yep. It's just like the chain of command and understanding, remembering that.
that sometimes you hit that wall, that first person, but you go above them and then you just go around and you go, okay, well, I've at least done my part because I, I went through the chain. So I went to the next person and if they don't help, you go to the next person until somebody absolutely does help you because they will. Mm -hmm. And you will find that person who truly cares and who and it's just understanding that, you know, sometimes no matter where you are in life, there's going to be where you are, you're going to find a roadblock or a person who's having a bad day that doesn't want to, you know, unfortunately that happens anywhere. But it's understanding resiliency and not giving up and keep going because you will find so many people, so many people here at the VA that do help. And honestly, then you find a great one that you link up with. Me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the VA just has so much to offer. And, you know, you go in and you say, I have X, Y, Z. You know, I need help with this. And you find the people who would point you in the right direction. And that main person is, to me, always your primary care doctor. If a patient wants to be seen by a different, or wants to see a different provider, maybe doesn't uh, connect with their provider, and it could be any provider. It could be primary care, it could be mental health, it could be, you know, anyone that they're seeing. And if they would like to switch to somebody different, which is totally okay, then they just can ask for a form to fill out to switch to a different provider, and then the person at the front desk will switch them to a different person and schedule them with that new provider. So, Or you just simply ask to see a new provider, and they go, okay, and they just do that. Yeah. I've never filled out yeah. anything. I don't know if that's a new thing, but... Yeah, but the, they're one. really great. I've had to do that several times just for different reasons. Just it's important to understand of being an advocate for yourself mm -hmm. and how important that is. And just knowing that you can be an advocate for yourself, you should be an advocate for yourself because nobody else is going to be fighting your battles. You got to fight your own, you know, and, and they're there to also have your back and they will have your back. Providing um, LGBTQ specific needs. Um, and so it's... It's really night and day even from just five years ago, honestly. And so to me, if you've ever had a roadblock at any point or you feel like, you know, you've asked before, just ask again because they have they have way more programs now. And, you know, there's a lot more help. Yeah. And I do feel like the VA, to me, is very welcoming. And the, I'm finding more and more providers um, are having more of those types of reactions of, okay, you know, when I, when I mentioned that I'm a lesbian, you know, and, you know, I get asked, you know, you know, just asking, you know, what's your sexual preference, whatever, you, yeah. men, women, both kind of thing. It just blows my mind because that was never a thing, you know, years ago. But I think, I think that's the most amazing thing. I feel like the VA is actually a lot more progressive than it used to be and it's a lot more welcoming. We have a transgender program that's, that's building and it's got a lot of momentum and um, very, we provide hormone replacement therapy and it's, um, it's an excellent program. So we definitely offer those services. It's just understanding that there are so many people at the VA that do care mm -hmm. and come in and get help because then you will find the right one you connect with. We care. I care. You are not alone. You put your life on the line for your country. Whatever your sexual preference. Or gender identity. You shouldn't have to risk it at home. The VA can help. I've certainly seen a number of veterans who who present with a history of IPV that might be remote or or is far more recent. Um, and so, you know, we've, we've had situations where we've had veterans present and often they're coming into clinic because they need something acutely. So we will manage whatever their acute presentation is and sort of try to promote safety and um, support within the environment that we practice. Um, and usually what will happen is because it's a more acute issue, we often will try to stabilize things acutely. Um, and then, you know, making sure that we sort of transition someone to a safe, stable housing environment as we address some of the other repercussions that come with exposure to IPV. So I mentioned I work with homeless veterans um, and provide primary care in this, in this clinic setting. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of our veterans do experience intimate partner violence. Um, it's unfortunate that that's something that they um, you know, being homeless, I think it puts you at risk for a number of things. And a lot of veterans that we see do come in, especially our female veterans, they do come in with that history. Um, and so we have to make sure that we as providers optimize our care and our sensitivity around the issue and sort of help to navigate some of the changes that might happen. 
um, or some of the you know stressors that they present with when when our veterans do come in. We generally, when we see a veteran, we, you know, we try to welcome them no matter what the background is. We try to sort of come with a sensitive approach. We try to sort of make sure we are supportive and um, we provide a an environment that's welcome, welcoming for all veterans. I mean, I think there are programs that we provide that are relatively new, and I think there's discussion around LGBT veterans and that they're they're welcome in the VA and they're welcome as veterans and we appreciate their service. Um, and I think that that discussion has sort of sparked some of the other services that are offered. So we have transgender care. You know, our clinic is it's a homeless clinic, but we have veterans who also are going through some transitions. In, and so we work really closely with the transition clinic. Um, and so that transgender care is therefore then started to make a little bit more, it's made a little more continuous and it's an improved care. So, you know, veterans talk to each other. And so we've had one veteran say, you know, I talked to this other veteran who happened to be our patient as well. And, you know, she mentioned X, Y, and Z that made it much more effective for her well-being and for her care. And so is it possible for me to get those same services? So I have seen some piggybacking in terms of veterans saying, you know, we've heard that you offer these services. We'd like to know how we can get them. And that's sort of have, being able to have that open communication, not just politically or globally, but also on that day-to-day -day level where it's actually about uh, concrete care. What I love about the VA is that it's all centralized. There, you work very closely with other partners within the within the healthcare environment. So, if you send someone to a subspecialist, they will know what's going on. If you send someone to your team social worker, you work closely with that person on a daily basis. You see their notes. You work with them. You talk to them about how the veteran is doing. And there's nothing better than serving our veterans. So, that's that's why. I came to the VA. We want the VA to be a place where we welcome you, we care about you, we care about everything that you care about, so we want to be there to support you. Um, not just around medical care, not just around mental health, not just around housing, but we also want to see you feel like you have a safe place to be, that you have the benefits you deserve, and that you have the services that you, you need. We care. We care. I care. You are not alone. You are not alone. You put your life on the line for your country. Whatever your sexual preference or gender identity, you shouldn't have to risk it at home. So, okay, so. You shouldn't have to risk it at home. The VA can help. The VA can help.